I'm Steven. And I'm Kevin. Today's episode of the Steven and Kevin Show, we're going to give you five tips to spice up your website. Welcome back, everybody, to episode number 67 of the Stephen and Kevin Show. Today we're talking about websites, uh, specifically five tips to spice up your website. And these are things that we employ in our own web design services. Uh, for the record, we're not doing this podcast to promote web design, but it's a good time for a plug for it, right? <laughs> so we see a lot of bad websites out there. It is fixable. It's not nearly as expensive or time-consuming as it once was. Mm -hmm. Check us out. If the shoe fits, wear it. Uh, you'll notice by some of the tips that we're offering today, if you don't have some of these in place, it's probably time for a new site. It used to be, Kevin, in our business, we'd say every five years it's time for a new website. Right. Now you're looking at more like every year or two you need something fresh and new and that speaks to the decade and maybe even the year that you're living in. Yeah, I mean, we, we see websites all the time that just look like these templated link, uh, template farm websites. That they're, they're not unique. They don't really represent the advisor's true brand. We can do that for you. We can turn one around in about 60 days uh, and uh, and they look really, really sharp. Yeah, they're, they're better looking than your average website. So, hey, here's some things that we look at. Number one, engaging photography. One of the first things you look at when you take on a new web design project is what does their photography look like? Do they have good headshots? Do they have a team shot? Are there some bigger images that can be used in, in this site? Um, because when you look at most new web designs, it's less text, it's more imagery, and you need to have better than uh, stock art. Yeah, the, the stock photos are really of yesteryear, so you want something that's personal. Also, super high res, right? If it's going to be on a big monitor, it needs to look really, really sharp. So you need to make sure you hire a professional and get some of those done. Think about the differences in how websites look now, Kevin. You know, back in the day it would be, if you had a moderately good headshot, that would be about all you ever needed to put mm -hmm. on your website. Right now, there's so much more space available, you need some wider angle. Yeah. Pictures of you standing in front of your office or sitting around your conference table, sitting in front of clients and things like that to bring you to life. Number two here is tight explanations. And I think this one links to the engaging photography uh, for first one because it's more about the visual and the overall feeling of the brand as opposed to paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of text in terms of how you do what you do. So think about just really short, concise um, verbiage that um, that explains you know what what you do, how you actually add value to your clients, what sets you apart, your differentiators. Yeah, it's really a lot easier to put a ton of text than it is to be succinct. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think a lot of people get into that. It's like, well, we really need to explain this service and that service. And we also offer this and don't forget about that. And before you know it, you've overwhelmed people and they're not reading any of it. Yeah. If you look at the bigger brands out there, people who put millions and millions into their website, like apple.com, they're or not Tesla. Over, I've seen yeah, that one. They're yeah. not over explaining anything. Yeah. They're, if anything, they're under explaining it, leaving a little mystery so that when you talk, you're intrigued. Mm -hmm. So Think about that uh, as you look at your website. One of the easiest fixes, most all of you out there, if you have a web, if you're not at a uh, at a wirehouse, you can go in and edit a lot of the text on your website at minimum. Yeah. Think about cutting it back a little bit. Yeah. Less less is more when it comes to text. Now, number three is that is this, and then and we all, we should know this. This should be a no brainer. But this is the first screen now, right? This is where people's eyes and ears are first. And you need to have a mobile website. If it's not built for mobile first, then you're really missing the mark. So 41%, uh, Kevin, is the current US stat of all the web traffic that is coming from mobile devices as opposed to desktop. Yeah. And if you look at the trend line, it's going up every year. Yes. Yeah. So uh, think about that. And also, uh, one of the ways to check it is to go right to some of the pages that people look at most often. You might think that the most compelling parts of your website are things like my process, our investment recommendations our blog, it, those aren't the most popular pages. Mm -hmm. If you were to run a heat map and, and look at where people's eyes and ears are, if you had Google, Google Analytics, you'll probably find that people are checking out the About Us page and the Contact Us page. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it from mobile, uh, when you go to Contact Us, is it really easy to find your phone number, one click to dial? Is it really easy to find an email or to commit, submit your contact forms from that Contact Us page? Number four here is list building. So making sure that your website is built to capture information, right? You have people visiting your site. Let's say you're running social media campaigns to drive traffic to your site. Are you, you know, do you have plenty of lead magnets 
that are enticing enough for people to want to put in their information in exchange for some sort of white paper, some sort of giveaway, um, some sort of, of quiz, whatever it might be, so that we're capturing those visitors online. So what happens when you build something like that? Usually in the first couple of weeks to a month, you're underwhelmed by the progress. That's right. I mean, you, you, you don't expect that you're all of a sudden going to get all these people to complete these lead forms on your site. No. You look at it and you're like, oh, well, you, know, you got a few names here and there. Over time, those names add up. Yeah. I mean, that's our, our business model is content marketing. So we, we see it firsthand. Any given day, any given week isn't all that exciting. But over time, the results are really cool that you're building a database of people that you can then market to. Yeah, that you can drip on over time, build credibility with them. Um, get in in their familiarity bubble, right? So now that they're seeing you regularly and when that time comes, you are the person that they think of. You need that sort of um, lead capture forms within your website. You have to. Number five, interactivity. Uh, if you look at some of the older websites, there's not a lot to do there. You go through, you retext, uh, you get out. Nowadays, it's interactive. You mm -hmm. should have things in there like um, video blogs. You could have quizzes. You should have a link to your client portal. I mean, it should be useful and, and where they feel like it's, they're immersed in the experience. Yeah, it would be actually be really cool too, and, and you know, maybe this is kind of even next level to have a chat feature within your site too. That's the, the ultimate level right now of interactivity, where you'll someone live right there where you could, you could talk to them if you needed. We put that on our website, and it's interesting. Uh, you don't really know how much people are gonna use it. Yeah. And then you realize, people use that a lot. Yeah. Because you think, well, my email's on there. I have a contact form. Are they gonna really chat with us? Yeah, they do. Especially if they know it's a real person and not a bot. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's a really different. We've actually had people chat us and say, is this a real person? You're like, yes, this is a real person. What do you need help with? <laughs> yeah. um, and sometimes they're trying to find something on your website or they requested a download. They didn't get it, whatever it might be. You, you want to have that level of interactivity if it's possible within, within compliance. So think about this. Think about how website design used to work. And again, this is something we've lived through because we have been early and often uh, investors in our own website, right? Mm -hmm. We probably spent more than most on our own uh, technology over the years. It used to be that you would fork out tens of thousands of dollars to get a new web website, right? It would be, be a big designer project. Yep. You'd be coding it from scratch. It would be a year long project to get this thing right. And it wasn't a lot of fun and the output was good, but it sure took a lot of effort. Nowadays, you don't, this is our opinion, but a, an educated opinion. You don't want to go the route of doing it yourself to where, yeah, you could go and, and find uh, a Wix site that is okay. Or watch a million YouTube tutorials, right? Yeah, you don't, you don't want to go that route, but you also don't need to pay somebody to build this thing completely from scratch and take a year and a hundred grand to get it pulled together. Those days are past, mm -hmm. right? It can be done in under 60 days for not a crazy amount of money. Yeah. Right. So I think, think about it in, in that light that don't be scared to bite off that project and don't be scared, scared to do it every two years on, on average. You know, I think one we don't have on here, but um, in terms of this list, this is a, a bonus would be having some flexibility within your site too. And I think that's kind of what you're hitting upon. I was talking to an advisor the other day who had a website. It looked, it looked fine. It was, it was been built in the last five years, but it was completely just raw code, right? It was just HTML code. And he couldn't go in and change anything. He couldn't add a blog to it. So then he reaches out to the original developer to add one blog He's, or to create a blog section. He said, oh, $1,500. Right. That's ridiculous, right? That's that's the websites of yesteryear. You need that flexibility to be able to make quick changes, um, add a blog, um, you know, have content that's refreshed regularly uh, with with little, you know, expense or effort. Yeah, and think about it this way too. You you originally had a big hand in building your current site, more than likely, mm -hmm. right? It, 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 most of, most financial professionals out there, when you built that site, it was your own. It's your baby. You liked it at the time. Get some outside perspective now on what people think about it. Ask your team members. Say, what do you think about our website? Yeah. Ask some clients. Hey, we're, we're, we're just you know, dipping our toe in the water of thinking about a new site. What do you think about ours currently? Just to get some outside input on it. What's your impression of, a, of an advisor, Stephen, when you, when you might talk to them on the phone, you go, oh, this is a pretty smart, smart person, smart individual, and you pull up their website and they have an old website. I, it, it strikes me as somebody who's not as dialed in as I would want as a financial advisor. Me too. Why? Yep. Because I know that it doesn't take that much time, effort, and money to pull together a really banging site right now. Yeah. 
And so why wouldn't you put forth the effort to represent your brand in a really professional way? And I, yeah. I'd also be at least subconsciously thinking, if you're not keeping up in this area of technology, what else in your business is a bit antiquated? That's exactly where my mind goes, yeah. is that yeah, yeah, this is something that's easy to keep up with. It truly is a lot of times your first impression nowadays. And why wouldn't, if, if they're behind in this aspect of their business, they're probably behind in some others too. All right. So you talk a lot about, you know, obviously Kevin and I are a little bit on the younger side. You talk a lot about next gen selling. How do you engage the next generation? Well, one of the things that they're going to check out when they're looking at mom and dad's advisor is, you know, I'm going to look you up online. Yeah. And if you seem like an old school advisor, maybe you're not my speed. That's right. That's, you know, something to consider. So anyway, hey, hope this was helpful for everybody today and uh, best of luck in your web redesign. Catch you next time. Thanks everybody.